on this computer. There we go. So we're recording. So I will go back to sharing my screen. Press one. Share. And so I'll pause my music. Uh, can everybody see Excel? Yeah. Brilliant. So I'll just open the chat here now as well. Yeah. Where's the chat gone to? There it is. Um, Grand. So uh, this is an Excel spreadsheet. So like I said, you'll be using Excel in uh, engineering mechanics statics next semester. Uh, Excel is used by engineers for data collection and data entry. So um, it's used for calculations, graphing, a lot of graphing, tabulation of data, that kind of thing. Um, it can be used for, I've seen it just people, whenever they don't have a calculator on hand, they just use Excel as a calculator. So it's really simple to do basic arithmetic in Excel as well as more advanced stuff. I'll just quickly fly over now to the example one, the example I had earlier on. Where was it? Uh, I only had it open there. Here's one I made earlier. Yeah, so th this, is, this is a spreadsheet that I did for um, Mechanics and Machines 1 last year in semester two. Um, this is the kind of thing you'll be using Excel for. So these are uh, just tab tabulated data from the lab. And then after the lab, the data is tabulated and graphed. Uh, all of the theory and all of the formula that were used are further explained in your actual lab reports. But using Excel allows you to explain your understanding of those formulas way better. So a lot of lecturers ask that you use Excel to show your data being used in a way that shows that you understand the formula rather than just pulling it out of the tables. Um, so before we go on to this nightmare of a spreadsheet, we'll go back to a safe blank spreadsheet. Um, Worth so mentioning that Mechanics and Machines 2 is a second year, second semester module for um, mechanical, mechatronic, and BMED? I believe BMED, BMED, yeah. Are BMED so. in 2? So if you're in electronics, you, you will not use Excel as much, but I, it it'll be useful. I believe they use it in electromag. I could be wrong, but I think you use it in electromagnetism. And uh, it's also just handy for if you're graphing inputs. So if you have like mm. oscilloscope inputs or if you have like mm. system data, like for control systems, uh, yeah. that, that kind of spans all of the disciplines. Um, so if you haven't used Excel before, uh, I'll go in from the very basics. So um, Excel, is built to be used simply. So if I wanted to put in, let's say, the numbers one to 10, one after the other, I wouldn't have to go one, two, three, four. No, I could just put in one and then this little black square here. Uh, if I put in two, it recognizes patterns. So if I select both of these squares here and then go to drag these down, it'll recognize that there's a pattern between these two. So there's an increment of one. So if I drag this down, it'll finish it off and in continue that pattern through uh, all the cells that you've selected. Um, the same thing can be done. It doesn't have to be increments of one if I want to do zero. And let's say if you're doing something with uh, angles and you want to go in increments of 30 degrees, you can go 30 and zero and then do the same thing, select these and a little black cross down here at the bottom corner and then go up as far as 180. And then you have all of your increments in 30 degree intervals. Um, if you do the same thing and you have, let's say if you wanna have a series of numbers, so maybe binary inputs or um, you want numerical data tabulated but not incremented. So if you have uh, model numbers or like, um, uh, just like uh, data that's not, that doesn't need to be incremented over time. So let's say you have like uh, one, two, let's go back, and three. Oh, that's a two. Uh, there we go. So I believe this worked last time. So if I select all these, and then if I hold control, you'll see uh, above the black cross in the bottom corner, there's another small black cross. So what that'll do is, is that'll, that'll not replicate the pattern. It'll replicate exactly what's there. So if I go down to here, it'll do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So that's handy for if you have like variations in a system. So if you have like version one, version two, version three, and you want to calculate like different inputs over time, you can do this. Um, so that's just some of the basic uh, incrementing tools used in Excel. 
uh, we'll worth on. noting that that can be used without an increment as well. If you just had one in that top cell A1 and you just drag that down, it'd make one, 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 one over and over. So that can be done with anything as well. That can be done if you put letters, any sort of string in there. Um, it'll make something similar. So just like that. So that, that's also handy for like model numbers or if you want to like name your inputs or stuff like that. Mm. So I'll delete all these. Um, so uh, what's the next thing I have here? So the next there's thing a I question, have... There's a question there, Jacob, saying, are you what? using your mouse? Yes, I'm using... Uh, oh, God, I just dropped it. Uh, I'm using a normal mouse. I'm not using the trackpad on... Uh, my laptop, I have it connected to an external monitor. Um, you can navigate Excel completely using the arrow keys. Um, it makes it a bit harder to, I'm not sure how you select with arrow keys. Uh-oh, how do I do that? Ah, uh, I'm not sure how you select cells with arrow keys, but um, I will. if you're using Excel, I would fully advise, just in engineering in general, I would fully advise picking up a small optical mouse, wireless or not. Uh, doing solid works with a trackpad is, don't Beyond a nightmare, <laughs> coding with the trackpad uh, is even worse. And trying to do Excel with just your keyboard or just a trackpad can be annoying, especially when you're trying to select cells. So I'd fully recommend, I think my friend Paul has one that's um, no bigger than like that. He has a wireless mouse that's only about that big. Um, it's all you need. Um, so uh, I'd recommend picking one of them up uh, wherever you can. It makes inputting data way easier. Uh, so the next thing I have here on the list is just some basic functions. So, uh, like I was saying earlier on, Excel can be used as a basic calculator. So, uh, I know when we were doing mechanics and machines two lectures there last week, uh, Paul Young needed to show off some calculations, didn't have a calculator on him. So we just cracked open Excel rather than the calculator in windows. He opened Excel, which <laughs> says something. I just realized that. Why didn't he just, never mind. Um, so let's say if I had, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, force equals mass by acceleration. So let's say if you want to show force over time. So uh, if we have uh, an input uh, called mass, or an input, uh, and then acceleration. So acceleration. So I'll just extend that out so it fits. There we go. So let's say if we were testing with different masses over time, increasing by a kilo every time. So we had one. I'm not going to put in zero for mass because I don't want the stuff to get messy. Two, uh, and let's say we wanted to go up as far as five. So we just do that. And let's say we each of those underwent the same acceleration. So let's say each one of them underwent 10 meters a second, let's say, uh, per second squared. Pardon. So 10, 10, and then 10. I just realized that I did the thing I said you didn't have to do. <laughs> I did that the wrong way. What I should have done is just that. So... That's just, it's, I would recommend coloring your inputs. So as you saw here on this one here, I had everything color coded. It makes everything way easier to keep track of. So I'll just color this in. Um, Jagger, just one thing you may or may not even know about this. Um, if you have a column there, say you had your one, two, three, four, five in mass, then you wanted to make another column of acceleration there. If you have your 10, say you delete your, um, your, your, second through four fifth 10 there so you know what i mean yeah so if i go to yeah. this yeah keep the mass ones yeah then select the first acceleration one and just double click the little drag down at the bottom of the cell ah yeah it fills Jesus. it fills everything to the cell next to it so that's really handy if you have lots of data Jeez. so say you had 100 rows instead of um five rows you could just double click that instead of having to drag it down and trying to get it exactly on 100 rows so let's have a look at that now see if it works so i'll go down as far as 10 and then we'll do the same thing uh oh i need to delete these don't i yeah oh look at that there you go that's class these little tidbits every so often. so a little bit to update on zoom let's say there it is there you go so now let's say if you want to calculate force so um if you, you're all doing basic sciences of engineering, I'm not sure if Rob O'Connor has covered this yet, but if you did physics at Leaving Cert, you know the force is equal to mass by acceleration and is measured in newtons. Um, other thing, if you're doing tables, just try and keep track of your units. Um, and if you're presenting them on a lab report, make sure you keep your units in the actual uh, heading, just like that. It just makes it way easier to read. And um, 
excuse me, lecturers don't like you dropping units because it means that um, if you're trying to like derive the unit from the actual formula itself, if you don't have the unit, you won't be able to derive the proper unit. Um, so if I just have this here, let's color that in. And so let's say if I want to calculate four. So what I could do is um, go, okay, so one times 10, that's 10. Uh, two times 10, that's 20. So I could do that. And in this case, because it increments individually, I could just do that. But let's say these accelerations changed. Let's say that was nine. Let's say that was 17, 100, well, 117, Jesus. Let's say that was 17, stuff like that. So what we can do is, is that as opposed to typing in plain text, we can start with an equal sign. So you can also manipulate anything that's in a cell. You can manipulate up here on this bar at the top. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier if you have some really long formula to, because as you, there's no, text overflow so as you start going past it it'll uh, mess up so um let's say we wanted to write a formula to calculate force so we know that force equal the mass of acceleration so we can put in a bracket and uh say that okay so we want to multiply this one I'll close the bracket there uh and it's uh an american program so it's the asterisk multiply um just a program really can't putting an x um so and we want to multiply that by the acceleration so we just click on that and if you close that bracket and we hit enter it's 10. so you can see up here that on the data it'll show us 10 but on the top in the formula it'll show us what the true formula is i just messed that up so if i hit enter oh i messed it up again um so you can see the formula up here on the top so if i start dragging this down this hopefully this works Brilliant. So here it was A2 is multiplied by B2, which is these two here. And I dragged it down. And like we saw earlier, if I drag down using the black cross, it increments one by one. So we'll go one, two, three, four. The same is true for cell values. So if we go down to the cell, if you see the formula on the top, it's incremented by one. It's now A3 by B3. And when we continue doing this, so if we just do this, you can scroll the whole way down. And you can see three by 17 is 51 and then four by 10. So you can see the formula on the top changing and you can increment the cell values rather than putting in the raw data. Um, does your trick work the same way, Rory? If I double click this one, oh, yeah, it does. Ah, that's class. It's there one of go. the handiest things. Did not Once know you that. know these little tricks, Excel is a really nice program just to play around with sometimes. Yeah. If you're doing an, ex uh, doing an assignment, it can be very satisfying. Mm -hmm. That sounds like the nerdiest thing ever, but Oh, it's we, just when you when you make a nice graph, it's just <laughs> me, oh. <laughs> me and Rory were prepping in the Discord and we figured out that uh there's a there's a function called convert and we we're losing it. <laughs> we're like, oh that's so cool. <laughs> um <laughs> so the you can do the same thing for a division. So I'm trying to think what's a simple formula that involves uh division. Um somebody hit me with one. A physical formula that includes division. Uh which I over which? What did you say? Density. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Ohm's law. Yeah, so V equals IR. So, or, so or density as well. Someone said. Yeah, density is work as well. Um, so density is what mass over volume, right? So. God, I don't know. <laughs> are we right? The sound count. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> We're Thank all you. learning today. So <laughs> let's say if I wanted to change this to be over volume. So now we can change our data to be density. So now we don't want to multiply them. We want to divide them. So if we go in and we change this formula to divide, it does the exact same thing. And if I double click this, it'll do the same thing for all of them. So now you see our formula on the top. It's no longer being multiplied. It's being divided by so let's say then if we wanted to calculate the sum of all of the densities from our test. So if you want to calculate all of these. So we could break at Casio and start adding it all up. Or you could go down here and we could hit equals and just type in sum. So sum is one of the most ubiquitous um, functions you use in Excel. So you just go sum and you open the bracket and I think this will work. Grand yet, you just select your range you close the parentheses and you hit enter and it'll add up anything in the range. So the benefit of using these formulas like some 
rather than putting in raw values it's like oh um this isn't 10 it's 11 so let's say if i didn't put in the formula i have to change that to 11 then i would have to change the density to whatever four over 11 is and then i would have to go back redo the manual calculation and then add everything up to find the sum but if i change this to 11 the number here will change and the sum will change so as you use excel more and more you find yourself trying to condense down your points of manual calculation. So the less points of manual calculation you have, the way easier it is to go back and change your data over time and um, manipulate your data in the future. So like it's happened to me before where I've been doing a lab report and I uh, did my interval. I had to calculate something over, over 180 degrees, but um, I did the intervals of... 30 degrees i need to do in intervals of 10 degrees but because otherwise i'd change my formula i just in, uh, inserted new cells and then made it from go from zero to 10 drag that down and automatically did all the calculations for me as opposed to if i had done it on pen and paper or if i had done it manually i would have to like change them all individually um so that's just some of the basic tabulation and some of the basic calculations done in excel so what's the next thing i have here um Oh yeah, so um, let's say you have a calculation that has uh, three variables. So let's say this calculation here, um, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but let's say for whatever reason, we wanted one by 10 multiplied by a constant. So you could do it for, um, let's say like, uh, you don't do much in engineering, but uh, let's say like Newton's law of gravitation. I think it's, g multiplied by m1 o m2 over i think r squared i can't i can't exactly remember but any any formula any formula that you'll use that has a constant so like pi c um e all the like euler's number any of these constant values so um in in this um in the other spreadsheet i have opened here uh omega was a constant for the system and um uh, I'll actually see if I can show you here now. Um, does it change to the second spreadsheet when I swap over? Uh, can anyone see the new spreadsheet? Uh, it might just take a second. I think no. uh, I think it's because no, I was... no, no. Yeah, okay. I don't know. My video has been five minutes behind this entire time, so I have no um, idea what is I think happening. what might have happened is, are you, have you got multiple windows of Excel open? There we go. How about now? Did it work? Mm -hmm. No. I have no I idea. So. Um, you may need to re stop share and reshare, or just okay. oh, oh, there it is. Never mind. It's back. It's back. It's there. Good. It's good. So, good. Uh, if we see here, um, this data down here was um not needed in the overall experiment, but here, um, oh, can I click in? So this formula up here, um, relied on this value here. So this value is omega. So if I go to the actual lab book or the lab report I have written up. So that value there, that 0 0.34, that um, number there, uh, that was um, an important constant for the system. So if I go back to the Excel, there you go. You can see here at the top, I was multiplying by this true value every time. Oh, oopsie. Uh, I was multiplying by this true full value every time, this one here. Um, but it's a value inside a cell. So I should just be able to replace that 0.349 with B58 and not have to worry about it. But so if I go in here and I change this value, let me let me start from the start. So if I go up here. Might be worth zooming in there, Jacob. Oh, yeah, zooming small. in. Yeah, of course. Yeah, a little bit. There we go. Uh oh, oh, that did something wrong. Uh oh, oh, there we go. Grant, there we go. Brilliant. Okay, so yeah. now we're good. Brilliant. Okay, so um, let's say I start from the start. So this value here, I don't know why it says H sixty one, but um, let's say if I wanted to change this to be B fifty eight. So B58. So this is going to multiply everything by this value here in B58. Now it's still going to be zero, but if I drag this down it should copy the formula for every cell, but 
it'll increment. So this cell here is pulling A38. So that's pulling these values here. And it's going down these um, angular increments every time each calculation is pulling from a new angle. However, if I pull this down, it won't only increment the values for the angles, it'll also increment the values from B58 onwards. So it'll multiply the next one by B59, which is empty. So what it could do is multiply this 10 times, drag it the whole way down, and it'll work. But that isn't all that great because it fills up more cells and it just isn't great practice. So what you can do is you can do what's called a locked reference. So if I go in here, and if I put this in brackets, so let me enclose this in brackets, and if you put a dollar sign before the cell number that you're trying to use, it'll lock that reference. And what that means is that if you replicate that formula vertically, it'll increment everything that doesn't have a dollar sign, but any cell that includes a dollar sign will be locked. So if I drag this down here, you see, it doesn't change. The formula, every time it goes A39, A40, A41, A42, but that B58 stands, stays the same. And that's really important for any calculation you're doing with a constant value, whether that be omega, uh, T, sometimes you're dealing with a constant temperature, a constant pressure. Um, locked referencing is a super handy way of uh, automatically including variables and making your uh, formula way easier to read and way easier to modify in the future. Because if you have it like this, if you have it without the, um, the B58, the formula just gets massive. And if you have two or three of these dependent variables, especially in thermodynamics, you're gonna have a bunch of these dependent variables. Um, the formulas can get huge. And if you're doing them in Excel um, and you have these locked references, you can just write them once and then forget about them. And just reference back. If you ever need omega, you can just go back to that cell. If you ever need T, you can just go back to that cell. Uh, so that makes everything way easier. So, I will, does anybody have any questions actually before I move on? Uh, to that as well, Jacob. Um, if you're making a lock, re lock reference out of um, a cell, you can, instead of actually manually putting the dollar sign in, if you select the cell, find the formula up the top at the, the input bar at the top and put um, like the, the, the line, what's it called? Like where you're typing, just put that over where the cell is in the formula and hit F4, it'll actually automatically put in the dollar sign for you. Oh, it doesn't matter. Look at that. So you see with the top here now, it automatically, when I hit F4, it automatically put in that dollar sign. So it means I don't have to do it manually. So again, more of these tips that add up over time. So that means you have even less manual work. Um, make Excel do the job for you as much as you can. So now... That'll make it totally locked horizontally and vertically locked. But if you hit F, I think it changes it to rows first and then columns. Ah, oh, So okay. you can choose locked horizontally. Okay. Grant, so can anyone hear me? Hello. Oh, ah, there Hello. we go. Jays. Yeah, internet crashed. Uh, I'm back. Uh, nice. Let me go back to share. Now I'm back. Um, Can everybody hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes, loud and clear. Brilliant. Okay. Again. So I'm back. Uh, internet cut out. So let me just open up the chat again. Keep that here. If anybody has any questions, throw them in the chat. I have it open here on my second monitor so we can have a look. Um, uh, I'm going to move on now to some of the more useful uh, functions in Excel. Before I move on, does anybody have any questions? I understand that Excel can be... for a modern, modern or the... The, uh, the, the, the content can be a fair bit dry. Uh, Excel isn't near as uh, fascinating as um, electronics or SolidWorks or anything like that, but it's truly important and as, we, as I was saying earlier, me and Rory were messing around with it there before the, uh, before the event, and it's great crack. It is actually fairly interesting to just mess around with Excel and see what happens. Um, so I will move on now. So the so next point I have here is, is oh, another person joined. Welcome. So the next point I have here is formula creation. So a lot of the time in Excel, um, you'll be doing, especially in dynamics, uh, you'll be working with, uh, what do you do for the bottom value in density? 
Oh, for this one here. So this one here is just using the function sum. So if you type in sum and then select a range of cells, it'll arithmetically add up everything, every numerical value in that cell. So just like that. Um, I believe if one of these has text in it, it'll uh, shoot back an error. Um, uh oh, I messed that. One. Might just ignore it as well. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure actually. I know um, if you have a sometimes you, if you have a cell referencing yourself, it'll give you the ref error, which is circular reference, which is, means that you have a cell looking to itself to work on a formula, which won't work at all. Um, if you do uh, mechanical, however, you might learn about that in computation with uh, with Alan. There's um, iterative methods you do with with self-referencing cells that drop down the whole page, and it's really really cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. If you if yeah yeah if you're doing CAM, actually, you'll do all of this again next semester, but way more in depth. Yeah. Uh, you implement like Visual Basic and everything. Uh, it's class. They used to do it with actually, first years, but they moved it on to second year. It's a tough enough module, but it's it's really useful. Um, mainly the stuff on paper is is really difficult. So or can be. I will move on now to some of the extra functions. So is, does that answer your question? It's just uh, the sum function here at the bottom. I did it again. Oh, there we go. Brilliant. No problem. So um, I'll move on now to formula creation. So especially in dynamics, uh, you work with a lot of trigonometric values. So a lot of formulas implementing costs, sine, uh, and particularly um, pi. So um, I don't know if it'll be better to move on to the other spreadsheet now for this. Uh, I'll go through some of the, uh, the other uh, mathematical formula before I move on to the trigonometric ones. So another thing I'll be using a lot of functions just, is just square root values. So um, if you're looking for the square root of a value for whatever reason, if a formula spits out uh, has a, a squared term and you're trying to find the formula in terms of that, square term, but you just want to get it back to um, first order. Uh, the function is SQRT. So if you go uh, equals SQRT uh, and then put in a cell. So I'll say for the minute, I'll say D1. So I'll just put in any cell here. And so it's a zero because there's nothing there. But I'll put in 100 just for now. And you see it says 10. So I'll, be using, I'll use this cell up here just for all of these example formula. Um, another one. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> another one you'll be using a lot is uh, exponential. So this will grab a exponential. There we go. E raised to the power of the given number. Yes. Yeah. So if I do this, this will give me e to the power of a hundred, which is a really big number. Um, you'll be using that as well uh, in engineering maths. You do a lot of logarithms and uh, exponential functions. Um, you don't use Excel too much in engineering maths. That's way more um, on paper, pen and paper stuff, uh, but it's still handy to know. Um, we have average. So uh, average will just return the mean value of a set of cells. Uh, useful if you're doing statistics or if you're looking to find the average uh, weight or the average time of uh, a set of values for an experiment. So if I go average and then i select these so this so this one here will pull the average of our densities from earlier on so the average density is 0.536 um kilograms per meter cubed jays this is just gonna... yeah yeah <laughs> um what's that count so uh count is handy if you're trying to write lab reports or if a value require if a formula requires a value of n so the amount of data points that you have. Uh, count will just count the amount of, uh, the number of cells in a range. So if I go counts and then just select all these, um, it'll say 10. Uh, it seems fairly rudimentary now because you can see on the side, it's just two, it's just these ones here. So it's just 10. But um, if you have a data set, that's hundreds or thousands of numbers. And you want to find like, uh, if you pull a random sample and you want to find the amount of units in that sample, uh, how do you do exponents that aren't e, like square and cubed? Um, so if you're trying to raise a number to another power, um, so that'd be um, let's let's pull this. Let's use d1 again. So that's the little hat on your 
on a keyboard and then there's a number i believe so there'll be a thousand yeah ten thousand so little hat on my keyboard here i believe this is standard qwerty so that's shift six uh, it's a little hat if you did french it's that symbol there um this can be replaced with anything so if i want to do 100 to the power of 10 it's that <laughs> um you can use decimals um this is also handy if you have something like to the power of another variable so let, let's say i'll just do two for minutes let's say if I had another variable here like 34 uh, and i wanted to find d1 to the power of d2 just hit enter just like that um how to divide a number yeah no problem so if i wanted to divide 100 so it'd be equals then 100 and uh the standard program so you do it in programming next semester. Um, arithmetic operators in code um, aren't the ones that you normally write. So for multiplication, uh, it's I'll do multiplication as well, actually. So if I want to multiply D1 by, let's say, 5, um, it's the asterisk, so shift 8 on my keyboard. Uh, not an X, you have to use the programming operators. So let's say multiply that by 10, it's a thousand. Uh, I'll do the same thing here again with division. So that's just a forward slash, divide that by 10, get 10. Um, yeah, there you go, perfect. Um, addition and subtraction are the same, but um, for addition in Excel, I recommend using some, even if it's only two numbers, um, just get used to using some. Um, because it does look a lot cleaner and it's way easier to alter your ranges. If you do want to add a third value, you can just go that one, that one, and that one, and I'll add them all together. Um, the, yeah, the question with the exponents, it's uh, just this little hat thing here, shift six on my keyboard, and then any value. Uh, that'll calculate an exponent. I did it again. <laughs> um, that's where I was, I count. So what comes after count? Does anybody have any other questions before I move on to the next function? Uh, yeah. So yeah, a, yeah, exactly, perfect. Yeah, so whatever, uh, yeah. whatever X is, whatever cell number it I'm is. Just putting a few things in the chat that might be useful. Right. Um. So the next one here isn't all that useful for engineers because a lot of our data is numerical. But me and Rory saw it before we started, and we thought it was cool. So. Uh, let's say if you have a series of text-based cells that you want to squish together. So if you have a series, uh, it could be handy actually if you are writing a program that's exporting its output into CSV files and you open them up in Excel and you want to pull um, all of the outputs into a spreadsheet and then turn them into one constant string as opposed to multiple smaller strings. Um, the uh, for, the function is called concatenate or concat. So let's say if we have DCU engineer, oh, oh God, engineering suck. And if I have equals concat, and if I select these, it'll squish them all together into one constant string. That's our Instagram. Go follow it. Uh, <laughs> the shameless plug. Nice plug. Yeah. So um, not too useful of um, of a function, but uh, me and Rory found it on uh, Excel. And we thought it was cool. So neither of us knew exactly like, like at all what it was. Yeah. But... Yeah, it's a it's a, a text-based operator, so we've never used it before. Um, so move on now to what's the last one I have? Hell yeah, yeah. Keen knows what's good. Follow our Instagram. <laughs> um, Thanks, Keen. <laughs> So let's see here. Um, what's the next one I have here? It's convert. So this is another one that me and Rory found. So if you have two, um, if you have two variables here, um, give me one second. Hello. Oh, sorry, geez. Uh, all right, so let's see here. Uh, convert. So in thermodynamics, um, there's two, in most engineering uh, calculations, you'll be using SI units. So that's kilograms, meters, seconds, amperes, candela, and what's the last one? The last one, whatever it is. I can't remember. Um, 
So most of your equations will be in SI units, so base units. So you shouldn't need to, the only time you need to convert between units is if something says, this happened over a course of an hour and you need to convert it back to seconds. Um, main, sorry? Was it Kelvin? Kelvin. Yeah, exactly. Kelvin. Yeah, Kelvin. Yeah, yeah. That was Kelvin awesome. Awesome. that's yeah. the last one. Yeah, got it. Right. That's actually it's something that you'll use it for because a lot of the time your calculations will be read in degrees, and um, you'll need to use Kelvin for the formula. Um, another one that me and Rory thought of is in thermodynamics. You're given a lot of problems in terms of megapascals, and you'll need to convert them back to bar or the other way around. So the function is convert. So if I put in, uh, let's say I'll use d1 again. So let's say if I put in Convert. Oh, that looks disgusting. Let me make that all caps. So the uh, necessary variables for the convert function are a number, so 100, then a unit. So let's say that is Celsius. So you have to put your next variables in quotation marks. So quotation mark, and I'll give you a list here. Now it doesn't auto populate the list when you type it in. Uh, it might, I tried doing it earlier on and it wouldn't work, but uh, if you just pick one from the list, so I had teaspoons up there. Um, let's see, Kelvin. Uh, here we go, Celsius. So we want to convert from Celsius. So we double click that. And then for our next one, it'll actually automatically pull all the, all the very, all the, oh, sorry, all the measurement systems that you can convert it to. So I won't let you convert from like Celsius to kilos, but I'll let you convert from Celsius to any other temperature, temperature system. So we have freedom units here um, or Kelvin. So we'll use that one now. So if we hit enter, it'll convert 100 degrees Celsius, add on 273.15 and convert it to Kelvin. Um, you can use the same, again, you can swap between pressure systems. You can swap between uh, time systems. So between hours, minutes, seconds, distance. If you have something in meters, you need it in millimeters. Um, how do you guys open up that table? Uh, open up the table of, um, of measurement systems. Uh, it should automatically open up. So if you go equals convert, uh, and then I'll pick D1 again, just 100. Uh, your units that you choose have to be in quotation marks. So it's quotation mark, and then I'll bring up this scrollable table. So let's say if I want to convert from uh, hours, to, hours to seconds. So I'll say hour, double click that, comma, reopen in quotation marks, and let us swap between the rest of our time systems here. So let's say seconds. So if you want to convert minutes to seconds, uh-oh, uh, no. That's just a syntax error. Oh, I just clicked outside of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go, yeah, so seconds, close parentheses, hit enter. It's 360,000 seconds in 1,000 hours, 100 hours. I can count, I swear. So um, that's some of the basic functions that me and Rory found uh, or thought of that we've used before. Um, if anyone has any questions of like how to do other things that they can think they might need to do, uh, for example, uh, who was it earlier on asked, um, Ben asked about how to type in exponents. So if anyone has any questions like that, uh, operations that you think you might need that we haven't gone through, put them in the chat now and um, we can go through them here. I hope, uh, how do you graph? Uh, I'll go oh, through, yes. yes, I'll go through some good of the, question. very good question. I'll go through some of the functions that we have here now, just the last two. And uh, then I have a whole section planned on graphing and I'll walk you through the graphs that I had opened up earlier on. Um, graphing is absolutely the most important thing you'd be using Excel for as an engineer. Uh, if you have data, graph it. Just, just may as well, no harm. Um, no matter what the data is, no matter how you find it, graphing data just makes it so much easier to view uh, even if it's just basic data and you have it on your um, you have it on your system and you're reading it as just like a list of numbers and it's impossible to view. If you just graph it, it makes it way easier to uh, read over time. So we'll move on to graphing now in a sec. Does anybody have any other questions about some of the basic functions before we move on? No one? All right, I'll move on to the last two functions I've planned here now. These are just two basic trigonometric functions, uh, if I can remember how they work. Uh, how do you convert again? So here's the formula for conversion. So uh, the function name is convert. Then you open your list of variables using an open parentheses. Then your variables are a number. So we chose 100 from unit. 
um, which is the unit you want to convert from, and then two unit, which is the unit you want to convert to. Those conversion units have to be in quotation marks. Um, that way the function can view them as um, units you want to convert from and to, and not just basic strings. Um, so there on the screen is just the basic one for convert. Um, we'll try. It's probably worth, it's probably worth noting that um, I've never actually used convert. It's a kind of another one that we thought was really cool, mm -hmm. but it might be useful in other like circumstances. Mm -hmm. Um, like you can, you could use it as well. If say, say for the table of the top left there, you see how he has mass in kilograms. Say you had a whole lump of data that was measured in grams. Um, now converting grams to kilograms is a simple, uh, divide by a thousand. But if it was something more complicated, you could make another column, set your first cell to convert this cell next to it, um, grams, grams, then drag that all the way down and it would co convert everything in that column over. Yeah. Um, just the thought. Yeah, it convert um, with online learning, um, a lot of your CA will be open book or you'll have a lot more CA than you used to. And uh, even just doing tutorials, if you have access to a laptop, uh, I specifically found converting to megapascals in Thermo a living nightmare. So having yeah. convert for specifically that, I wish I hadn't known that back then. It would have made it way easier. Um, so if, if nobody has any questions about uh, other functions, I'll move on to the last two functions I have here now. So um, as you know, pi is truly rational. It's infinite, it's non-recurrable, and it's non-trackable. So... Um, there's multiple ways of writing pi. Uh, there's the 3.14. I want to say 22 over seven as a joke, but I think the dynamics professors will yell at me. Um, you just put three, take it or leave it. Um, but for the purposes of Excel, because it's a truly irrational number, um, I not, haven't actually tried putting in the symbol for pi, but if any of you have written any of your lab reports for electronics, you'll know that trying to get the symbol for anything is a nightmare using alt codes. Um, raise your hand if you've ever just typed in ohm into Google so you can copy and paste the symbol for ohms into your lab report. Um, so for Excel, the function is just pi. So if you type in pi, it'll give you just that that's pi. So whatever you multiply by, you're not, if I want to multiply something by that. So if I want to say like uh, two pi, so pi two, oh, nope, get out of there. Um, pi by two. That's not multiplying two by 3.141593. That's multiplying two by the full irrational string of pi. So um, the sixth decimal place is beyond the range of necessity for engineering in general, I would argue, up until you're developing very critical systems. I understand that physicists sometimes have to use more um, decimal points of pi. But... Um, Putting in 3.14 could lead to some, if you're writing a lab report and your lab partner's writing a lab report, your numbers could differ slightly if you if you use 3.14, if they use 3.1415. So using pi and then just a close set of brackets um, guarantees that you'll be using the, the full extent of the rational number pi. Um, the same thing can be used for division. So if I have equals pi divided by two, that's pi over two. Um, once you type in pi and the brackets, um, it's treated like any other number or any other um, variable like pi normally. Uh, you can multiply by it, you can divide by it, um, you can use it in other formula, uh, you can reference it in other cells. Um, and uh, it's definitely useful for um, the results, the, the page here I have called results, um, where I had to multiply by, I had to go by, intervals of 30 degrees but in terms of pi because it was in radians i couldn't use degrees so i could convert 30 degrees to radians and put the number in every time but i just divided by different values for pi um and it made it made everything way easier uh, this, i think the same thing works for the other function i have here which is degrees yeah so degrees uh oh, name uh, degrees, let me put that in caps. Uh, as you can see there, converts radians to degrees. So if I have, uh, let's say 
to buy pi. I don't know if this will work. Oh, it does. So two pi radians is 360 degrees, right? Or is it 180 oh. degrees? It is? Grand article. Never remember. Yeah, yeah pi so, is 180. So degrees converts radians to degrees. So two pi radians is, is 360 degrees. So here we used pi just like any other number. Uh, while it has the same syntax as a function with the closed set of brackets, it's used as any other number uh, for the terms of calculation. So degrees is handy if you want to convert from um, radians into degrees. I actually don't know. Is there one? Oh, there is. So if you wanted to convert uh, degrees into radians, so if I have 360 degrees, it'll convert that to radians, which as we can see here, it's equivalent to two multiplied by pi. So degrees, radians, and pi are three functions that I found invaluable for trigonometric calculations. Uh, just because trigonometry can be a nightmare. Uh, that's rad. Man, that's Jake. rad. I love that. <laughs> that's really good. I'm stealing that. Um, um, worth noting as well, I, that seems to be my catchphrase tonight. <laughs> um, you, If you're doing mechanical, you will come across that in computation because the trigonometric functions in Excel always, always, always work with radians. If you have something that you want to work with degrees, you have to put in sine, and then inside the sine brackets, you need to convert whatever it is into degrees. Um, whether you might be able to do that there, Jacob, very quickly. It's, I can't remember whether you have to put radians or degrees into it. So this will convert 360 degrees into radians, which is two pi. And then I'll do sine two pi, which that didn't work. <laughs> Try putting in sine degrees 360. Okay. Because you radians converts degrees to radians, which is redundant for the the. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Converts radians to degrees. Oh. Yeah. No. Whoop. Oh wait. If I do two pi here, will this work? Probably. That's not sine two pi. Anyway, Excel is all in radians. Take my word for it. Yeah. Uh, believe him. Um. Don't check. Take my word for it. Same thing for trigonometric functions. <laughs> um, they are truly functions in terms of Excel. So sine, cos, uh, tan, they're all used as functions. So it's equals then the word in full caps, then a set of parentheses. Um, they are to the extent that Excel stores them. Excel stores digits to, I think, the third, 16th decimal Jesus. or something like that. You, you can do some really fun stuff with aliasing um where your values are not are too small for excel to actually figure out and they all just equal zero um but that again you'll do that in computation uh, if you're doing mechanical work <laughs> so uh... if you genuinely if you see something with the with the power of minus 16 um that's because excel shit the bed and doesn't know what to do <laughs> oh all right i don't know yeah same with Power minus. So uh, now, uh, does somebody have any questions before I move on to the last bit we have tonight? Which is graphing. The exciting yes. world of graphing. Moving on to graphs. The true reason you use Excel and not MATLAB. Yes. Excel is just Chad MATLAB. MATLAB's a pain in the hole. It is. <laughs> it's that handy for it. systems. Yeah. But uh, it's fairly slow and it's not free. Um, Octave is if you're looking for a free MATLAB alternative, you can get Octave. It's nowhere near like, you know, how Google Sheets is like almost as good as Excel. Octave is nowhere near as good as MATLAB. So um, really, yeah, I tried using it for systems because I, I didn't want to go down to the lab because I was lazy and I used it for thirty seconds and then went to the lab. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> so I just got up and went to the lab. Um, I I actually did buy my lab in first year for um, numerical problem solving and I used it for that year and I have not used it since. Yeah, uh, so. you use it for systems if you do ECE or yeah. mechatronics. Uh, I'm not sure if we use it this year, but you'll use it a lot if you do ECE. It's dead handy for certain things. It's dead handy for like system analysis and system um, simulations, but for basic calculations, it can be a bit weird. Uh, MATLAB does matrices great. I'm not sure how Excel deals with matrices actually. 
you actually can if you know your way around them excel is okay for matrices mm -hmm. um i'm gonna repeat one of my catchphrases tonight you'll do that in computation if you're in cam um <laughs> but uh it, you can do them and some sometimes they can be a little bit finicky but again excel is excel if you're used to it it's mm -hmm. quite easy to use I really wish we did computation for oh, us. Stop, geez. Yeah. It first years great. used to do it. First years used to do a module that was analogous to computation, but they replaced it with fundamentals of professional development. So oh. which I would argue is just is is, oh. is as important. Um, <laughs> writing lab reports and writing writing academic reports in later years after doing fundamentals, dead handy. If I was going in blind into second year or now that we're doing new enterprise development project, going mm. in blind to that without fundamentals, I'd be lost, in all fairness. Yeah, that's fair. So, does anybody have any questions before we move on? Well, all right. In that case, I will move on to the, other re the real reason everybody's here tonight, which is graphing. Um, graphing is the one true use for Excel. It is, I'd argue, almost unparalleled in terms of being able to graph. Um, it makes everything way easier. Um, like I was saying earlier, if you have data, graph it. May as well. Um, so tonight I'll just be showing you how to do some basic graphs. Um, I was going to pull a data set of just a regular sine wave in terms of X and Y so we could graph it, but I'll actually grab the data set from my lab last year. So if I pause sharing off, yeah, the, the other, the other spreadsheet I have set up is a far better example of graphing rather than doing it from scratch. So if I hit new share. That's a big messy one, is it? It's not that messy. Yeah. All right, Grant. So here we go. Grant, so this is the Mechanics and Machines one lab for the crank and con rod. So I can't remember exactly the um, the uh, implication of this graph, but um, here there was plenty of graphs. So uh, the lab relied on the changing of a radius of a connecting rod from a crankshaft to a spinning cylindrical body. So um, you can see here we have different graphs for different radii. So one for 25 mil, 50 mil, and 31 and a quarter mil. Um, the lab was to show that regardless of your change in radius, the relationship remained the same. So as you can see here, these graphs, despite having different values, you can see the axes on the side. They change, the axes change, but the relationship in the graph stays relatively similar. Um, I won't go into the, the theory of the actual module. Um, that is far beyond me. Um, I'll just grab the data and, and, uh, and create a graph for it. So um, if we want to create a, so if we go in here, this is a XY scatter plot with a trend line built in. This is the main, if not the only graph you'll be using as an engineer. Um, it, is Swiss Army knife for graphs. Uh, looks great, portrays X, Y values great. Um, the line connecting all the dots, uh, Google Sheets doesn't work as well with that, but uh, it makes it way easier to read. Um, and that's just like, the, that's just the characteristics of the X, Y plot. The uh, grid lines, legend on the side, the uh, intervals on the grid lines, the labels, that's all baseline for every type of graph. Um, so if I... I zoom in just a little bit, Jacob, maybe. Zoom in? Oh, yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah. Here we go. So if we go over here, so this is what a graph looks like in Excel. So I'll just hit this button here. So this is chart filters. So it actually show us what our data is being pulled from. So I'll actually grab... Here, let, me, let me grab um, this data here. So that's pulling... The experimental data is pulling from there. I'll actually just pull the data out and throw it in the other spreadsheet, just so that way it looks a bit nicer and isn't as intimidating. Good idea. Yeah, because that God. So if it's I throw a big that old in, spreadsheet. It's a beautiful um, spreadsheet. I'll have a good spreadsheet. Uh, by doing engineering, you will gain a new appreciation for a damn yeah. fine spreadsheet. Uh, yeah. There we go. And I'll grab my theoretical values. Uh, these ones here. Okay, so you don't need to worry about the implication of these numbers or where the numbers came from. Uh, for the intense purposes of tonight, they are numbers. That didn't... Oh, no. <laughs> that's, a, that's a formula cell. I need a... Um, 
Rory, how do you pull the true oh, values no. of a cell, not um, the formula of a cell? It's a different paste option. Oh, it's a different paste option. That's grand. Yeah. yeah cool. so, oh, it's no. one of the. It's one of the paste options. Grand. I think it's post. I think it's paste true or paste format. Something like that. Delete the we are looking at the big, the big fancy one. By the way, you may need to reshare. That yeah, I'm just I'm just pulling over the data now. Um, give me one second. <laughs> Copy. I like having like half here for tech support. I yeah, really like much, that. Yeah. I didn't do a computation. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Paste values. There we go. Finally. Okay. So yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Um, so. I'm just gonna skedaddle to the bathroom for a sec. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> Interval. Da, 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 da. Well, we're writing on Rory because it is clear that I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions before we move on? I do have an idea what I'm doing. By the way, that was a joke. For legal reasons, that is a joke. <laughs> Uh, I'll just um, oh just yeah, some I'll walk through some of the basic layout of uh, of Excel. This is normal to all Microsoft Office 365 applications. So same thing with the coloring up here, uh, the paint tool that's colors in the cells, dead handy for just looking at data. It makes it way easier to read. Like this here is far easier to read than just a block of plain text. Um, color coding it and everything like that just makes it a bit easier to read. Same thing with borders. So if I wanted to add a border around this, this bordering tool just adds all outside borders. So you see now there's a bit of a black line between the top and the bottom. Uh, yeah, Rory does look a bit like Jesus. Um, he's Excel Jesus. That's on camera. <laughs> I stand by what I said. So um, the borders uh, make it way easier to read data and process data mentally. Um, for Excel, like you saw in that last spreadsheet that I had there, um, I just realized I never swapped back over. There we go. Grant. So if, can everyone see the spreadsheet we were dealing with beforehand? I don't know. <laughs> he was in another age at the minute. Are you back in um, Dublin? Sure, my, you're on my video phone. is like five minutes behind you speaking. So oh, I okay. picked up like after you said it. Yeah. Um, so you're saying things. I'm like, that makes no sense. Five minutes later, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can everybody see the sheet that we were dealing with beforehand? Someone else answer. Please. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cheers, cheers, cheers. Uh, I'll say I'll it again real quick. Five minutes. <laughs> there is our Instagram handle in the interim. If you want to go follow us on Instagram. Um, <laughs> same thing if, uh, let me, uh, let me, let me, let me grab it real quick. Uh, I'll throw it in the chat. Same thing if you're not a member of the Engineering Society, I uh, highly advise that you become one. We will be planning on doing a good few more of these during the year. This is actually something relatively new. We didn't normally do these kind of workshop things. Uh, they're turning out pretty well. People are a big fan of them. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that, you would be told he hath returned. Oh, he's back. Were you guys waiting for me? Uh, I was going through some 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 smaller stuff before I moved on to graphing. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the some of the stuff I would have gone through it after the fact, but I know I, after I finished graphing, everyone will just dip. Um, <laughs> link to the DCU clubs and societies website is in the chat there now. If you want to join, it's two quid. Well worth it. Um, we're planning That's on doing a bunch more of these. I'm currently working on organizing you know the kits you got for, uh, in first year the uh, electronics kits we're working on making our own one of them uh to uh we'll be subsidizing the cost of them uh the projects inside them is a solar powered power bank a um am radio a hardware analog synthesizer and um a piezoelectric microphone so those are some those are the projects we're working on this year um this whole kit Dubby, we're like we're making a little kit. Uh, also, completely new, so we're doing a test run of that this year as well. Um, not sure on the price yet. Got a bit of a got a, a rough idea from the guy at the company today, but I have to work on that now after this. So, um, in the meantime, I will go back to the Excel spreadsheet. So here we have our data. So from our other sheet. So if you saw on the other graph, we had uh, engineer structure. We did have hoodies last year i don't know if we're doing hoodies again this year um Aoife, are we doing hoodies maybe if people want them if people want hoodies let us know uh join on the clubs and societies website join our discord let us know um i didn't get a hoodie last year because i forgot um oh look at them 
Damn, bro. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you remember, yeah. So from the graph we did last time, uh, we had one set of Y values and two sets of X values. The implication of the data from that experiment was that we had a theoretical value and an experimental value. Um, so uh, for now, we'll just be doing, we'll be doing both, but we won't be dealing with the true values of those data. So if you see here, these here are our Y values. So I'll just write that down. And here will be X1, and then here will be X2. So I'll just move all these data values over just to make, um, if you are writing lab reports, uh, you'd be taking a lot of screenshots of Excel data. So I recommend that you try and make everything look pretty. Uh, makes it easier for you to read, easier for you to track, easier for your lecturer to track. Um, and the easier it is to read, the higher the mark you get. That's, that's how that works, right? So like I was saying earlier with the pi function, you can see here, if you look at the top uh, in our data line, um, these values aren't actually true data values. They are different uh, fractions of pi. So we have pi over six, pi over three, pi over two, two pi over three, five pi over six, and pi. So these are pi increasing in values of 30 degrees or one sixth of pi. So um, the, uh, the experiment was taken in degrees, but then for the sake of the calculation, we had to convert it back to radians. So that's another useful thing for pi. I didn't actually, I could have, in hindsight, could have used convert and just used the data and then changed it and then copied it down. Um, in hindsight, would have done that. But if you know the relationship between pi and degrees, you know that through the degrees is pi over six, you can do it that way. Um, Stuff like convert is dead handy for stuff like that. Save yourself uh, working with different data values. Um, so I'll just get rid of this internal border here. That looks very weird. No border. There we go. So um, if we want to put in a graph, uh, we go up here, we go to insert, excuse me, and we go to charts. So these are the different charts. You have histograms, you have bar charts, pie charts. Um, this is the one that we're concerned with, the XY scatter plot. So specifically, the smooth lines and markers. This is the main one you'd be using. Uh, I'd recommend using the moment lines and markers, just easier to read. So if I throw that here, it's currently blank because uh, it has no data to pull from. So no, I haven't done this in a while, so bear with me. Um, if we go over, if we right click and we hit select data. So select data will allow us to start picking ranges for our data. So legend entry in series. So chart data range. Um, oh, actually, there's an easier way to do this. So if I get rid of this, and if I select this data here like this, and if I go to insert and then recommended charts, it'll offer me recommended charts based off of the selected data range. So we want this one here. So if you hit OK, it'll actually graph it for us. So um, this is handy when you have simple um, X, Y values in a table. That's another benefit of having them set out like this. You can have Y then X and just select them and be done with it, not having to put in manual data ranges. But we will, we will go through actually what that looks like. So if you go select data, you can see here that we have one series of data. Excuse me a sec. Pardon me. Mm -hmm. So you see here we have one series of data. So um, and up here is what it actually looks like. Um, so this is, oh no. I'm gonna hit cancel before I mess that up. So there was the formula dictating our actual data series. So that's how Excel sees data. So all we see it as is these are our Y values, these are our X values, plot them on a Cartesian plane. Way easier for us to read, but Excel um, can read them in terms of that formula up there. Um, so let's say, so this is just a basic chart, but uh, as I'm sure you know, a chart with no legend, no data, no, no, sorry, no title and no axis names is useless because this is just a chart. We don't know what it's for. So something I found out today that's, I believe works that you can have dynamic, you can have dynamically changing chart titles. So I can go in, I can change the chart, the chart title by double clicking and putting in, um, I believe this is uh displacement due to angular change i think that was the name of the graph and so i can type that in um and I, if i need to go change it it's like, oh it's actually displacement due to um it's like change due to displacement at the moment is it uh because it 
your X is on the Y, and you have your Y is on the X. Displacement. Sorry, displacement with angle change. Um, do I have it like that? Yeah. <laughs> Look at your data. No, the, the change in angle is on the bottom. Is it? Yeah, the change in angle is on the bottom. It's reading it. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. no, yeah. Sorry. This is, I, I have this label. Wait. Have I? Is yeah. that right? No, no, no. Yeah, you were right. I have this labeled backwards. So this is actually our Y values here. So X is this change in value yeah. in okay. radians over here. And then um, this here is our change in um, displacement. Good spot. Wouldn't have spotted that. Um, so let's say if I do need to change it. So um, I can actually, let's say we just say like, oh, no, that's not right. Let's just say hello for the minute. So that's just our text cell. We can go in here and we can hit, we can select the data, select the title, hit equals, pick this cell, hit enter. And now as opposed to having to change the title every time, whatever we change this to. So displacement with angular change, the title will change. So handy if you have multiple if you have multiple graphs or if you want to have kind of like an overall legend um how long do you grow the hair rory um a better question would be when was the last time i cut it because i've had it long for about 10 years holy christ yeah <laughs> that's a long time mm. um <laughs> The uh, the dynamic titles uh, can be handy if you have like on the last Excel, Excel spreadsheet we saw multiple graphs and you just want to have them like labeled so like you know oh graph one is this graph two is this and um, if you just want to change them on the fly or if you think of a better wording over time um, you can change the data you can change the titles um, by changing the cell rather than changing the graph because sometimes when you double click on a graph everything changes. Um, so uh, we'll add, so if you see here, chart styles. So this is all the different styles of charts. So this will just change the font. So this is sticking within our XY scatter plot. This is just changing the font, maybe the background. Um, that one's pretty. Um, it has some of them have like drop shadows. That's just um, yeah. graphical changes more than anything. Never need to change those, but if you want to, you can. Make them look pretty. Um, so. This is the important part here, the chart elements. So right now, this actually just happened to us. We weren't sure which axis was which. So if we add axis titles, it'll add blank axis titles. So if we want that to be um, change in radians, change in angle, measured in radians, radian, oh. Uh, just like that, and the uh, x, the y-axis, is our displacement. All right. Good point to note: you don't actually have to. You don't have to do this um, dynamic changing. Oh thing. no, you you don't at all. I just think it's cool. It might be worth it if you have lots of graphs that are all kind of labeled the same or similar things. That's um, a good point. Um, but if like. I also have never used this as well. So for all intents and purposes, you can just highlight your um, access titles like they're just a normal text nice. and put the, input them yourself just as however you want. Right. So um, now we, um, so now the actual graph itself. So let's say if we had a second set of data. So if we go in here and if we go chart filters and we, add a new series of data so add series series x values so our x values are displacement so sorry the x values are our change in angle got the wrong again so we select these and then our y values are these values here so these are our experimental values rather than our theoretical so these are our theoretical values oh that didn't work why didn't that work Oh, there we go. Brilliant. I think I just hit a key by accident. So yeah. hit OK. So now we have two series. So we have series one, which was our, which is our Y1 here. That's our experimental data. That's what we measured in the lab. Then series two is our experimental data. That's our theoretical data. That's what we calculated using the equation 
the equation is you'll do it as part of the lab in second year. Um, it's big old equations, but yeah, big. Um, but again, you can throw the whole equation into Excel manually with yourselves. It's big. Um, uh, you can you can throw all the formula into the uh, formula line manually, pick your cells and forget about it, and just go these ones, and I'll just do all the math for you. Dead handy. Um, so now um, we have series one and series two, but that's not much use to us because what what are these series? Like we we know what they are. We know that they're the experimental and the theoretical data, but that's no use to somebody viewing it. They, they need that kind of context. So you can explain that in your lab report or you can name your series. So series name. So this is our measured data. So this will be our, we can name it here, measured data. Hit okay. And then this will be our calculated data. Hit okay, grant. So now when we add our, no, not data labels, legend. Now we can add a legend that'll tell us which color each one is and it'll automatically pull the series name. So now we don't have to change the legend name because it automatically pulls it from what we changed earlier. So we add a legend and we extend this out, make it a little bit prettier and there we go. So that's our measured and theoretical data graphed over time. Now you can replace these values with anything. This can be, voltage over time uh this can be frequency over time it can be um uh, any to any any bivariate data you can graph whatever you want um it's that now with the last time i did this sorry the first time i did this with statics i had to graph i think it was just displacement over time three hours yeah. looking at a laptop not a clue what to do but now i can do it in 10 minutes and now everyone that's here You've seen how to do it. Um, the video will be uploaded. So, if if you remember how to do it, somebody goes and tries to do the graph now for statics next semester. You know how to do it. You can tell them, save people a lot of time, a lot of hassle. Um, there's a lot of the smaller things like we saw earlier, changing the graphical style, um, changing the colors, all that kind of stuff, make it look pretty. Um, Excel is a great place to experiment with uh, your knowledge of Excel. If that makes any sense. So, like, oh, like. Just there, uh, back when I did this in February, I didn't know I could convert units. So I just could have converted from degrees to radians. I didn't have to do pi over six, pi over three, pi over two. I just could have done it way easier, but I didn't know that, but now I do. So Excel is a great way to, it's kind of, you add it up over time. So like, if you're not doing CAM and if you're not doing computation, but you know somebody that is, um, they might know, you might be trying to do something in Excel. They could tell you something, a function that does that and then that way you don't have to do it manually anymore excel is the language of automation it's the whole point of the language is to make everything as simple as possible as little engineers are lazy so doing as little work as you can as little math make the computer do all the work um and it's just it's it's dead handy to use i, I love excel i think um i did, coming into college have never used it before um i think he used it for accounting once in the fifth year um but yeah, it's it's definitely one of those. It's it, when looking at it, you open up Excel, you're like, oh my god, like it's it's massive. But um, once you get used to it, it's not too bad. Efficient, yes, efficiency, not laziness. Um, those things are not mutually exclusive. <laughs> um, so uh, before we wrap up, does anybody have any closing questions uh, for Excel? Any mathematical operations um, you want to know how to do? Uh, anything you want to be able to just do in the future? Um, if we can i might throw this excel spreadsheet up either on the discord uh or in an email so that way you just have access to it so um i'll i'll pretty i'll pretty it up i'll like say convert and then have just like the cell for conversion so you can tell what it does um that way you can just come back to it so you're like oh how do you convert again oh there it is you just click on the convert cell and tell you the formula uh, almost like a cheat sheet for excel um i'll change my data values a bit so um Anyone that's doing the crank and Conrad in second semester, don't copy me. <laughs> mm. uh, I multiply all these by like seven and a half or something to make them all weird. Um, so they're different R values. But um, yeah, I'll see if I, if I can distribute this either through the Discord or through email. Uh, if it is through email, only members will be able to see it. If it is through the Discord, only members will be able to see it. So again, I advise that you do join the Engineering Society. The next one of these um, will be in week six, I believe. Uh -huh. Week six, week seven, 
Um, seven? Yes, seven. Sorry, pardon me. Yeah, week seven. The next one of these will be in week seven. It's uh, another electronics workshop, so it'll be a rerun of what we did last week, um, but with a new experiment. So we are doing a Maker Space next week. Though, as well. Yes. So next. It's the not next, like this in the series. No, the next actual Maker Space we're doing next week is a SolidWorks slash 3D printing workshop. So it'll be a focus on 3D printing. We'll have a presentation on the basics of 3D printing um, and how we actually go about doing it. Second years, will they be 3D printing this semester or next semester, Rory? Uh, When's both? This, this semester, this semester. Yeah. Um, because CAMS will be doing um, manufacturing? manufacturing process as one. Yeah. Manufacture process is one. You have to make um, you have to make a. We had to make a, a, a toolmaker clamp, which was really cool. We had to three D print the whole thing, and put the whole thing together. That's class. Together using the three D printed parts, and it was a really really cool project when it actually worked. Don't you have a three D print a boat as well for fluids? That's for fluids in second semester. Yeah, so you and get a three D print twice. Yeah. Mechatronics um, don't only cams do. Fluids is fluids is something else. Yeah, you have a bit. To, if you're in first year, you have a bit to go for till fluids, but oh, yeah. that one's a doozy. That's the trade-off for doing cam. You get to 3D print a boat. You have to do thermo fluids. Yes. Is it worth it? I don't think it is. <laughs> but manufacture processes is. Not sure. yes, it looks like great crack. Yeah, it's, for, it's definitely one of the ones I I wish I could have done. Um, yeah. Imagine if mechatronics could like pick and choose your modules. That'd be class. Oh, yeah. so cool. yeah. That'd be great. Systems? Nah. <laughs> Get that out of here. Don't need it. Um, no, I, I, I like any of Marissa's modules, though. I am Marissa Condon's brilliant. So. Can we use it for our own or just for core stuff? Um, do you mean the 3D printers or the Excel spreadsheet? I'm going to guess you mean the 3D printers. Um, the college has a series of Ultimaker 3s, I think. Um, they're only accessible by students for coursework. Um, you use them a lot in third year for product design um, and mobile robotics, I think, if you, if you, if you want. Um, they have a scheduling process. Um, that's, it's very rigorous in terms of like who's, allowed, who's allowed to use them and when. Um, but the Engineering Society, we have a Prusa i3 Mark II and a MakerBot Replicator II. Um, we have them as a society. Um, at the towards the end of last semester, we were working on an automated printing setup where we would charge students and allow them to uh, print their own SDLs over time. Then COVID hit, so we might be able to work on something like that in the future. Um, I have a 3D printer, so does Rory. I believe we have the same one. We both have Ender, Ender, Mark, 3. Ender 3. I have the Ender 3 Pro. There's no real difference. Um, nah. I remember because I, I got mine and then a couple of months later you approached me and said, hey, what printer did you get? Yeah, uh, Eric Redmond got the exact same one as me. Oh, did he? Yeah, so we all have Enders. Oh, yeah, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it's that one over there. That's um, my one there, the big boy there. Mario poster. But um, Good the, recommendation is to get your... Like, I'm not going to... We can't really say go out and spend 250 or whatever they are on a 3D printer. They're not 100% necessary, but they are very nice to have. They're very fun to use as well. Oh, they're great crap. Hobbying. Yeah. Um, so it like advice would be invest in a 3D printer. If not for college, then just for yourself because mm. they are fun to use. They you are really good crack. We, we've, we've done subsidized 3D printer, 3D printer projects before, but they were north of like 500 euro. I think we were buying Prusa i3s. Yeah. Um, buying Enders could be a thing we do in the future because they're way cheaper. You can get them on sale yeah. for like 200 quid. Um, can print me in printer. I've, I've printed parts for my printer. I've printed like mounts and stuff for my printer, which is really weird. I was printing, I was like, huh. <laughs> I was like, this feels wrong. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, so yeah, anyway, the event next week, uh, it's uh, 3D printing slash SolidWorks. So we'll be doing a presentation on the basics of 3D printing. And then after that, uh, it'll just be a open event where we, uh, people just design whatever they can in SolidWorks. Um, we might see, we might not be able to do it this semester, but we might see whoever's the best design. Uh, we might be able to 3D print it for them and get it to, out to them the following semester. If not, I see if I can 3D print it from home and drop it into the college. Um, 
but yeah, it's kind of a 3D printing SolidWorks competition. Uh, it's like you, yeah. Um, so that'll be same time next week, same place, home. <laughs> <laughs> the Zoom call. Um, but yeah, if you don't have SolidWorks uh, on your laptop, um, I believe you get it as a part of Projects and Tech Drawing. If you don't have SolidWorks, Tinkercad is a free browser-based um, CAD software. Awesome. Yeah, um, it's brilliant. Uh, it's what a few people used last year. Um, it's a great intro. If you're not used to SolidWorks or if SolidWorks is intimidating, which as I, yes. when I, when I came into doing engineering, I went to a fully practical school, couldn't do any of that. So um, Tinkercad, <laughs> Tinkercad is a great way to kind of like, if you open up SolidWorks and you're like, oh, I want to get better at SolidWorks, I'm going to do my own thing. SolidWorks will give you like a billion and one options to do stuff that you just don't want to do. But Tinkercad is way more like just, I want to do this and let's let you do it. As opposed to giving you options on how to do it better or different or stuff like that. So yeah, the SolidWorks uh, slash 3D printing workshop is on next week. Um, tell your friends, tell ever tell anybody that might you think might be interested. Again, the post will be put up on the DCU Clubs and Society's website and our Instagram page. Um, I'll give one last push. Go follow our Instagram. Go um, join the society if you haven't. Uh, well worth it. Um, join our Discord if you do join the society. Join our Minecraft server. The design challenge is going on right now. Uh, we'll be hopping on over the week. Myself, uh, Sela, Flavio, and John are the moderators. Um, if we're on and we see somebody building, we might give you a bit of a hand in creative. Um, drop off a few presents or something. It is just the season. It's after Halloween, so it's Christmas, by the way. Those are the rules. Um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> but uh, I'll pretty up this Excel document and distribute it to our members now. So, uh, if anybody has any more questions about Excel hello. or anything, hello, 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 you yeah, you dip for ages. I can hear you for ages. Damn it. <laughs> You're talking to myself. Yeah, DCU Wi-Fi, baby. <laughs> so bad. Oh, God. Take a care picture. Of oh, no. She's on her way. <laughs> They're defrosting Mariah right now. That's on camera. <laughs> what? They're defrosting Mariah Carey as we speak. Oh. Yeah. They're releasing her from her icebound chamber. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. That one took me a second. Yeah, if if, if I saw somebody like uh, bringing up Google Trends and they looked up all I want for Christmas is you, and you can see the graph just goes, boop, it ticks up just the tiniest bit. It's like it's happening. <laughs> uh, we need I love, like let me have this. I love Christmas. Um, anyway, if anybody, picture. sorry, picture. Photograph. Picture. Yes, there. That's what she was saying. Okay, now they're, now they're actually back in the land of the living. Um, if people are okay with it, uh, we're going to take a picture just for our Instagram. So either throw in your camera, uh, share your screen. Um, we probably should have done this towards the start of the... Um, yeah. Again, yeah. we did it again. Uh, there was 24 people here at the start, and we forgot to take a picture again. You got to stop sharing your screen as well so we can get everyone. Uh, right, yeah. You can probably stop recording as well. I don't know if it's still yeah, uh, I am actually. I've been recording the whole time. My video is five uh, minutes live. Uh, pause, share, stop, share, and stop recording.